here with a new RAV4. This is the Adventure Edition. It's also the 4x4. Uh, so this will kind of apply to a lot of models, and then I'll talk about some adventure-specific things. Uh, I do like this stripe up on this specific model. It look, makes it look kind of sporty. This one's near the end of its life uh, cycle overall. This does have the all-wheel drive, so you can see it has a slightly higher ride height. And then also, I like how it has the dark, darker wheels there. I think that's a nice touch. The back here, um, you get pretty, uh, you know, standard looking RAV4 rear. Uh, the only thing to differentiate this is the adventure trim is that little badge there. Uh, this one also, you do get the power lift gate. I don't know, if you, to raise it from inside the car is kind of nice if you're having, if you're not getting out of the car. Um, otherwise, it's, as you see, it's kind of slow. Um, and I just kind of prefer a manual one, but um, both are fine. Uh, one nice thing back here is you do get a regular power plug, so if you have a cooler or anything that needs power, uh, subwoofer if you have the upgraded stereo there, uh, you get the Adventure uh, kind of hard mats, I guess you'd call them. Uh, they're a lot more rugged. You do get a full-size spare tire, which I thought was nice. If you remember the old RAV4s, you'll probably remember they had the tire on the back of the back seat. It's, it's pretty spacious for a smaller SUV. I'm sure with the redesign, it'll be a little bigger. Uh, this guy here helps you, you know, you can uh, slide the seats forward or back. As this helps you fold the headrest, fold these seats right down there. That seat folded down, you actually do get a fair amount of cargo uh, space back here. Um, so that's pretty nice. It's a, you know, about at class average. It definitely, I'm sure the redesign will, uh, you know, raise the bar a little bit. It does have like this, the leather wrapped wheel and the little bit of stitching there. Uh, kind of sporty looking steering wheel actually. Um, which was kind of impressive for this car. Uh, it does have the backlit gauges. They're not electroluminescent, uh, but they do have that kind of interesting on graphic there. And then, yeah, the, there's this bit of a kind of, it looks like it's supposed to be carbon fiber trim. Not a huge fan of it. Um, it looks kind of sporty though. Also on the Adventure, come, you, this one does have the nav system, which, you know, um, it's part of that pa value package, which is normally 2,500, but it comes in about 1,500 on this car. Uh, you get a lot of tech in it, and so, you know, it feels like a more premium car. You get Bluetooth audio, you get iPhone integration, as you see down there. Um, things like that. You, also, in the Adventure package, you do get uh, this Adventure badge on the shifter here. I would assume this carbon fiber might be part of that Adventure package, and owner can let me know that uh, down in the comment. Cup holder up there, you get two total. Uh, and then you get the one back here. Uh, this console is split, which is a feature I like. So you do it on one side, you have this little area here for small things, and then you lift it on this side, it's a little bit deeper. It's not the deepest, because it still has the mechanical e-brake there, but um, it's okay it, um, for what it is. And then coming around here, the interior is actually quite a bit nicer. There is this little vent you may see up there, uh, which is kind of a nice touch. Um, I don't know that it adds that much unless you're sitting in the back or in the center where you know you need the air to come straight back. Um, digital dual zone climate control, pretty nice. Start stop button. I do like this patch of uh, leather looking, you know, stitched material here. Little storage cubby there in addition to the glove box. Um, so the passenger sides, you know, it's pretty nice. It's, o it's okay. And then of course you do get those adventure uh, floor mats here that are more rugged. Uh, in the front. That's about it on the interior. Not too, too much to talk about uh, on this guy. Um, there are some apps and things like that. I definitely do hope uh, in the future, and I know Toyota is slowly adding Android Auto and CarPlay, Apple CarPlay and such. So here's the fuel economy. As you can see, you can hit 30 on the highway uh, pretty easily. They're definitely more like mid to high 20s on the average. Kind of that's a freeway. Uh, run so pretty good fuel economy with the 2.5 liter and this does only have the six speed versus some of the newer uh, Toyotas have more gears than that so it's an older transmission that might affect the fuel economy a little bit uh, there's a sport button uh, both for the car which actually helps with the steering a little bit and makes it more peppy uh, or you can just do the transmission itself uh, over and into sport mode which is cool last thing I'm going to talk about really interior design wise is these vents here you can, um, you know, adjust them this way, or you can close them that way. I thought that was kind of a clever design, and it gives you a lot of mobility and range. Also, it shows you the back passengers, who has their seatbelt on and who doesn't. So, of course, you could just check the mirror, um, but if you want to be lazy... Coming around and check out some more buttons and gauges. That's the four-wheel drive lock. 
uh, which you can do up to about 20, 25 miles an hour. It's kind of neat though. It makes it uh, feel more sporty at those low speeds because uh, it is front biased. Heated steering wheel is a nice option. You can get lane departure is uh, kind of included standard, uh, which will help kind of guide you back into your lane, uh, which is a nice feature. Uh, it's not as good as some of the newer Lexus Toyota systems, but it's still there and it's free. Average with kind of a mixed driving, about 26 miles a gallon, like I said, highway, a little higher than that. And then 23 for the week on this car, so nothing uh, too crazy there. Um, this is kind of neat. It does have like a little G meter uh, in there, and then it shows where the power on the all-wheel drive is going. Yes, I do know that. Um, it is a front-biased uh, system, however, so uh, unless you do a very hard start or actually off-roading, it will send most of the power to the front. So pretty short uh, interior, exterior kind of review on this car um, because, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a midline model. It is about 30 grand for the midline. Um, you know, all cars and SUVs are going up. Um, you can probably get discounts on it because it is at the end of its cycle or of course pre-owned, uh, you'll get a great deal too. The off-road capacities, I saw a bunch of dirt and mud like still on some of the sills with a car wash, didn't get it off. So people do, do the light off-roading in this. It doesn't have the ground clearance to do anything too crazy, uh, but it does have the basic. Gonna stick it in sport mode uh, for our review now. The acceleration is surprisingly brisk, probably because this isn't super heavy because it's rather small. Um, you know, it's definitely adequate. It's, it's quick, it's um, not fast, but it's pretty quick. Um, so I can't really complain about the engine very much. This one does have the upgrade to tow around 3,500 pounds. The engine definitely would feel taxed if you were doing um, that, I would think. If you just did some light towing there, you definitely could do that uh, quite well. The steering I quite like on this one. I hope they keep the new one uh, as good as this one in sport mode. Uh, it's not like an athletic SUV or a sports SUV, obviously. Um, this one specifically made more for, you know, off-road adventures uh, and just more mostly around town stuff. But you can actually throw it uh, into a corner, which I thought was kind of nice. Uh, let me hit the acceleration a little bit here. So yeah, if you hit it hard in the very beginning, it does um, throw power to the rear. It, it definitely still feels like a front wheel drive SUV um, unless you use that center lock. Unlike some center locks though, this one only does go up to the 25 miles an hour. Uh, so you can't like keep it in center lock if you want like a more uh, sporty experience. But if you're doing off-roading, uh, it is nice for that. Uh, particular use. Uh, you know, brakes are pretty good. It's a pretty quiet car. It's pretty, basically pretty much a, uh, what you'd expect from a Toyota. This one rides on the Corolla platform, I believe. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, I, I think it, the platform works better here than in the Corolla um, because the Corolla is now getting replaced, but near the end there, the old Corolla got pretty long in its tooth. Um, here, it, it feels more, a little bit more modern and fresh. I, I mean, I would take this over the Corolla um, but then now there's a new Corolla which means that this is at the end of its life cycle and there will be a new um, RAV4 coming soon as well so like it, that's why I said in the beginning uh, you can probably get some pretty good deals on this uh, so would I buy this with my own money I'm not a big fan of these smaller SUVs granted the the RAV4 now is kind of grown up there's ones even smaller than it um, Toyota even has one Honda has one uh, everybody does. Um, it's pretty nice. It, it, it's definitely kind of middle of its class. It, it's very, um, you know, average or slightly above average in anything, which is what Toyota has been good at. I would probably personally wait for the redesign, but if you could get a great deal on one of these, it is a very competent overall SUV. Like the design of the RAV4, if you're set on this smaller SUV, um, and if you don't mind, uh, um, you know, getting something a little bit at the end of its life cycle. It's a pretty good SUV uh, overall. Until next time, my speedy racers, drive on.